Hey guys, Tubular. Today we're checking out the new Tier 8 French Cruiser car. No lemon on the screen there. This is the campaign reward ship. Why are we using lemon? Well, these guns feel more like battleship guns. We got kind of low damage per minute output. Uh, potential for big spike damage. Uh, so we're kind of trying to maximize the offensive capabilities. Uh, in my opinion, in the car, no, you really have to be kind of actively switching the shells, and also trying to get flanks. If you get shots in the sides of ships, doesn't really matter which class, uh, go ahead and try and rip them with AP, cruisers or battleships. Uh, if you're getting angled targets, uh, hopefully you can try and find a better position to get some crossfire shots, but if not, the HE will have to suffice. Now, the HE is going to be very tempting for a lot of players. It's going to read on your stat sheet... Well, on mine it says 30%. I think I got it boosted uh, with the lemon build. But a very high, presumably about 25% base, 30% with a good commander build, um, fire starting chance. And that's going to tempt a lot of players to just strictly uh, shoot each HE with it. You can get some decent salvos. You can get multiple fire type salvos with the HE. But the damage per minute, uh, the lowest only above the Drake out of the ships that I've so far uh, mapped out the damage per minute on at tier 8. Still haven't done Seattle, uh, Neptune, St. Louis, or Sejong yet. Haven't gotten those ones. <clears throat> but out of the uh, cruisers that I got, damage per minute, uh, a little bit problematic for the car now. So I picked this game for a couple reasons. When I was playing it, it felt pretty sweaty. And when we look at the end of the scoreboard, we're going to have one dude, not me, with 3,000 plus on our team, and then like five other guys 2000 or just i think there's one other guy that's just slightly below uh 2000 so it's a very good team uh game but it's kind of you know it's kind of emblematic of the ship like it's in my opinion it's a pretty well played cruiser game and there you can see the ripping potential of this like just shy of 20,000 uh damage with this thing at the ap in the broadside georgia but you know kind of a try hardy uh well played game in my opinion and, you know, the damage isn't bad. I think we're making some good plays, but it's not, like, huge damage. I feel like in a lot of other uh, cruisers, if we make the same uh, game, same type of performance, well, the damage would probably be a lot higher. So I just want to kind of point that out. Are you guys going to like this ship or not? I don't know. There's there's two general classes of campaign reward ships, right? There's the usually pretty well-balanced, uh, kind of, you know, can-be-fun type of ship, but you know most players playing it aren't going to go nuts and then there's occasionally there's like the super strong right uh you could those of you that have been playing the game for a long time undoubtedly remember a lot of those uh campaigns but this ship more run of the mill okay it's not a bad ship but it's not sending a thrill at my leg personally i can not see myself <laughs> playing the ship a lot uh, after i've reviewed it here once in a while maybe it's got kind of a feel of in terms of rate of fire, similar to like something like an Alaska or a Stalingrad, but it feels much less punishing. All right, uh, Zuma, same thing. Slow reload, big punishing guns, but those ships more consistently get the big punishing shots. This one, you know, not improved penetration angles. Maybe if we're going to make a build specifically for this, we'd want to get Dimitri Dewey in there and maybe even uh, Yamamoto. We consider it. I mean, this is not a <clears throat> build specifically for the ship, my uh, Rue build, but I think uh, trying to enhance the AP as best you can, probably not a bad idea. So there's a shot we would like to have AP on, but you can see the reload, uh, 20 plus seconds. We're getting less than three shots per minute here. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> it could take a while to adjust to what the guy's doing. Like he was broadside a moment ago. Uh, by the time we're hoping to capitalize on you can see on the map there is near he's over 45 degrees uh, away from us now. So that kind of opportunity is gone. All right, so in terms of this game, our team's done a great job. They moved into B and captured that, and it's going to be kind of a slog for the rest of the caps here. And this game is going to be tight pretty much until the end. And I think even if you check the losing team scores, if they would have won the game, uh, they would have had a pretty decent scoring uh game as well i think blue plays a little bit better in this game overall um but it's a pretty nice uh, higher tier game that you don't see too often uh not as regularly as you'd like to see anyways now uh, so we're trying to kind of 
number one, ward these guys off from getting C, slow them down if they're going to get it. Um, hoping our team doesn't go too nuts here because they are moved quite a bit forward in red and kind of spaced out behind the caps, which is never a good thing for them. Um, but just want to make sure that we can do what we can do to support here. Uh, Carno, the armor is decent. If you can get it angled, you can bounce a lot of things. So I think survivability is uh, probably a plus. The AA rating on the uh, stats page, 82. Take that for what it's worth. And the maneuverability, it's got a big turn radius, 870. The speed's pretty decent, 34.5. Uh, and, of course, we do have the speed boost. And the rudder ship, 13.7. So kind of <clears throat> middle of the pack, I'd say, for how I would rate a maneuverability on this type of cruiser. Detection, I don't know, you got just shy of 12 kilometers on here. So... Uh, there's not a lot of like standouts for it. I think it's just kind of supposed to be a, you know, battleship esque type cruiser uh, with the guns. And I would, you know, I was thinking about the ship. Like I'd, I'd say if you played it a lot, occasionally you'll get a ripper with it if the enemy's uh, cooperating. Like take a look at this shot on the Sejong, for instance, broadside cruiser. Um, you know, we don't quite kill him here, I don't believe, but we get him pretty damn good. You know. So there's another 12K shot. We saw the 18K shot against the Georgia Open. But then, you know, on all these other times where the reload comes up, and okay, now we got an angled Kronstadt. Well, let's see what we can do there. Probably should have switched over to the HE, uh, hoping to uh, find some more opportunities on whatever other cruises there. Yeah, we knocked the gun, sure, but we, again, we got zero damage. Uh, so, I mean, that's... Unfortunately for him, he lost his gun, but largely it was blocked and it, it's just a function of well the ap uh when the armored targets are angling properly properly you're not going to get the output i think relying on he only you're going to have low damage games in general unless you get lucky with the fire count now even with the good fire starting chance the day you know you only get so many firing uh 2.8 shots per minute or whatever it is and you know it's just it's tough to be really offensively productive in this ship, in my opinion. I would definitely try and play it in a flanker role. A little far back here, this is a position I would normally criticize. Uh, if I saw my teammates doing it, you know, we're quite a ways far back from here. But we have been, you know, we do have a lot of threats over here. And we've been trying to do our best supporting. But uh, just conceptually, you can see how much pressure we're really putting on C here when we're three squares away. Well, not a lot. Right, they're having trouble capturing the base, but it's not really much uh, in terms of us doing here. Georgia, once again, angled shot, sure, less than 1,000 uh, damage. Go ahead and switch the HE. Okay, well, now we got a Wichita over here that we're hoping to sight. Eh, not going to get the shot there. Let's hope we can get him. Well, he's going to drop spot by the time we can reload here. It's just kind of the you know frustration of playing a ship like this. Like... If I'm going to play a slow reloading ship, I'd rather just play a battleship that is going to have a little bit easier time to punch through, uh, you know, the targets that it's facing. Okay, so I don't, I don't personally love the Carno. I'm going to grind out the campaign. Uh, well, they're going to give me the ship anyways, but <laughs> if I, I would still grind out the campaign. Like I think it's a fine ship, but I don't think it's probably going to be too many people's favorites. Maybe I'm wrong, though. I think, is Siegfried a campaign ship, or is that just a regular premium? It's kind of got the Siegfried-esque uh, feel to it. Now, the Siegfried, I think, is even more inconsistent and more capable of big-time punishment than this. Like, this one's a little bit more consistent, but it's, you know, the consistency is kind of low damage output, and then occasionally you can get a ripper. So maybe if you really like the Siegfried, this is the <laughs> same thing. I don't know. After 10 games or so of this, I'm just... To me, it's like, eh, not really going to feel the call to play the ship too often. All right, that's my own take on the matter. Anyway, getting back into the game here. We're down a ship. Still got the lone cap. And you can see even being down a ship here, we're up, you know, what a, a cruiser's worth of points. You know, if we killed a cruiser and we had uh, no background scoring adjustments, we'd be up by roughly the same amount. You know, so that just goes to show you the nice production that the cap that you can control throughout the game will give you now we got a capture a bull at the moment we're going to try and get our team to move into a if they can get it 
and uh, we'll see. I think that battleship that's moving in there now is going to at least try and contest the base. Because of the fact that they got guys due to the east of them, he might have a hard time getting it without being reset. I'm going to try and get some shots here. I would like to get this George off, right? Because this, whether he's distracting us or not, he is in a perfectly 90-degree uh, angle creating position from the rest of his team here. So sooner or later, we do got to get rid of him, even though he's not you know, really controlling the center of the map, which is the more... Uh, valuable positions, especially later in the game. All right, they have tied it up in ships now. We are in the process of capturing A. You can see that's not going too well. They are in a process of capturing C yet again. That's kind of been the cap that they've been fighting over most of the game, and it looks like they're probably going to get it at this point in time. All right, Richelieu there. You saw we had HE loaded, shot him. Now on the map, he's you know closer to flat than he is to fully angled, so less than a 45-degree angle. Might as well try and hit that with the AP. I'm looking for those guys, though, because they're more broadside on the map. And if we can find a way to squeeze a shot over those rocks, we'd rather do that. All right, something over there. I think it's the Sejong. Something that shoots fast and furious. Briefly targeting us, so we're just going to wait. I don't want to have that and the Richelieu bull shooting at me, uh, trying to disengage. So we're going to let the guns, the front turret guns, which are slow to spin around, let them get in a better position. We want to get more behind the silent, or at least approaching it, so we won't sustain uh, continuous damage. And the Richelieu having some navigation problems, uh, stuck on the <laughs> island there. I don't know if he's letting some of the crew off. They're taking their time or whatever. But uh, we might as well go ahead and see if we can get some damage there. And again, it's you know one pen, one over pen, one skip. So for, what, 2,000 damage or something like that. That's what I'm getting every 22 seconds. Like, yeah, all right, well, maybe you're thinking to yourself, work on your aim or whatever. That's definitely a possibility that uh, is affecting the performance. But, uh, you know, I'm just relaying to my experience. I just, I'm not finding ways to squeeze big-time games out of this thing. Like, uh, for instance, another ship I've unlocked recently, the Drake, much more consistent in terms of, uh, offensive potential. Uh, whereas the car knows kind of, eh, it's survivable in a lot of ways, but it's not really that productive. Uh, so, again, look for opportunities to get the flanks. We haven't really been doing that this game. You might be wondering why I keep mentioning it. It's just how we had to react to this game, right? That Georgia pushing down south like that, we couldn't really move into the Northward position on the west, we couldn't contest the cap, and there's not a lot of flank we can do from the middle here, so we've just been kind of trying to contribute in ways that we can. All right, ship count tied up again. Now we do got A, we got B. Uh, we don't have anything preventing the capture of A, but late in the game here, we're talking less than three minutes now, uh, score becoming less and less relevant, right? To the extent that score would matter, uh, well, number one, they'd have to flip one more cap and then maybe even freeze the other one, and simultaneously start sinking ships to get the score closer to tied or even in a position where they maybe could uh, squeeze out a win on the score. But at this point in time, they're probably needing to sink everyone, and that's kind of tough to do when you're putting yourselves way out on that side of the map. Uh, you know, yeah, there is a cruiser over there that they could potentially kill, but uh, and there, there goes a rubric, so the score is getting a little bit closer. Uh, but in general, we want to be thinking about, okay, if I finish up what I'm doing over here, fighting this cruiser or fill in the blank, whatever you're doing, what do I need to be doing next? And you, a lot of times you got to start to do the next task while you're still working on the one you're doing. Getting on A, freezing the score, flipping the base, and killing the cruiser, rather than killing the cruiser first and then getting to, around to killing or flipping the base. Because it takes a minute to flip, uh, and at that point in time, it's going to be a little bit too late. So... That just goes to show you the value of grabbing that B cap right off the bat. I wish we could uh, know exactly how many points were generated over the course of the match, but whoever recognizes the opportunity to grab that early in the match has generated hundreds of points, which, as you can see there, tied in ships, up big in score. We basically give whoever captured B the gold medal. They've won the game I'm not going to say single-handedly, but they're the ones who basically scored all the points uh, that were consequential. So, Battleship that was down there kind of helping us out with Georgia. He's moved back into sea, freezing that score there. Uh, Sejong forced to come back and play the cap. I like the play. I don't like the idea of a Sejong rushing any battleship, of course. 
neither does the guy that's playing that right now, but he's saying to himself, okay, this is the play I got to make. I got to somehow torp this guy. We are playing for a kill every one on the enemy team strategy, and I got to do what I got to do. I'm not going to kill him with the guns. Got to kill him with the torps. Fortunately for him, we're here to support. We get the crossfire shot there and take him off the board. And now it's just a matter of can this guy sink us, all three of us, in the remaining time? And of course, the answer is no. I'm just going to see if we can get one more uh, shot off. We got AP loaded again. It's not ideal when the cancel is pointing at us. Not going to do a lot of damage. So, I'll, again, I picked this game because it was like, well, it felt pretty productive when I was playing it. But then when you're looking at the damage, you're like, Ugh. okay, well, that is what it is. Carno, uh, that's a look for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you, and we'll see you all later. All right, peace.